Well, good afternoon. I'm Tim Barnett, President and CEO of the Empire Regional Medical Center. And Governor Brewer, uh, you can all sit down. <laughs> Elected officials, uh, distinguished guests, it is my pleasure to welcome you to Yavapai Regional Medical Center today. We are very grateful to the governor for her leadership, her vision, and the courage she exemplifies. We applaud the governor for her support of the restoration and expansion of the access coverage for hundreds of thousands of Arizona citizens who are among our most vulnerable. This move will boost the Arizona economy, save the state money, lower health care costs for Arizona companies, and would be in accordance with the will of the voters who supported Proposition 204. The governor acknowledges that access is a national model for cost-effective care. It will also be critically important to rural hospitals like ours that are the safety net for our communities. It's not always easy doing the right thing. In fact, Ronald Reagan once said, there are no easy answers, but we must do what we know is right. By bringing billions of federal dollars that we've already paid in taxes back to the state to be used in our state, more jobs will be created. And make no mistake about this, Governor Brewer is doing what she knows is right. Governor Brewer's plan will translate into a healthier economy with more jobs as well as a healthier population throughout Arizona. She is always, always about helping people in the state, and that is good for everyone. We are honored by her presence here today, and it is my privilege to present to you the Honorable Jan Brewer, Governor of the great state of Arizona. And thank you, of course, for what you do up here um, in the hospital. Um, you are uh, uh, doing a great, great job, a standard uh, of which uh, many um, hospitals across the country could follow. Um, let me begin first, if I can, to say that last week I announced one of the most very difficult decisions of my career in public service uh, to expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act. As I weighed this decision over many weeks, I saw input from a range of stakeholders, business leaders, and healthcare executives. Uh, people, just like the people who are standing here today with me. Earlier today, I spoke about the importance of improving Arizona's competitiveness. These men and women who join me today know what that is all about. They know the impact that $8 billion from the federal government over four years can have on the Arizona's economy. They know this will save and create many thousands of jobs and communities across our state. Likewise, our hospital presidents and CEOs understand the growing costs they face in providing care to the uninsured. These costs are real. And... They are not just absorbed into the hospital bottom lines. No, ultimately, most of this cost is passed along to Arizona families. It is estimated that health care premiums for the average Arizona family are increased nearly $2,000 per year to help offset the cost of providing care to the uninsured. With my plan, we can not only begin to get a handle on these costs, we can throw a lifeline to safety net and rural hospitals like Yavapai Regional Medical Center. As I first mentioned, this decision wasn't one that I reached easily. I've never been a supporter of the Affordable Care Act, and I'm uneasy about the federal government playing such a large role in private individuals' health care decisions. But the decisions faced 
by Arizona's leaders today is not one of whether Affordable Care Act should exist. Fact of the matter is, it's the law of the land. Our decision is whether we will take the action that most benefits Arizona's families and businesses. And I'm proud today to be joined by some of our state's leaders in business and health care and appreciate um, them being here today, joining with me uh, to spread the word about the direction of which we need to lead Arizona in addressing this very important situation that is upon us. So with that, I am very pleased uh, to uh, introduce um, Senator Steve Pierce uh, from Yavapai County, and um, I hope that uh, you will welcome him. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here at home. Uh, all my kids were born in this hospital, and I know most of you by name, and uh, I have had parties with some of you back here. <laughs> Anyways, it's a pleasure to be here, and I wholeheartedly support what the governor is doing. I approve of her leadership. It's a bold move to do what she's doing. I think all of you know you're bleeding red ink, and we can't keep that up. We, it just can't keep going. The state government pushed the 204 population off onto the hospitals in 2009. We couldn't afford it. It's time that we step up, take it back, and start doing what's right for the state. The $8 billion, if you add it all up to what the revenue will be coming in from that, the jobs will be created, and the sales tax that will be on all of that money is going to be tremendous, and it's going to be helpful, especially in rural community hospitals like Yavapai Regional. So to be brief, I support everything on this. The governor's doing a great job in her old leadership. Um, I believe she and I have a tough time. Uh, I keep saying this is going to be restoration, not... Uh, expansion and it is restoration it's the 204 population but um, we're going to work on it we're going to get it done it might be a difficult thing down there there's a group of people that think uh, anything to do with taking money from the government is a bad thing which i happen to believe that myself but this is like saying you know we've already touched the tar baby we already have gone that way and as we're getting from a dot and the des everything else we might as well be helping our own selves out and the health of our state by doing this so I wholeheartedly approve of this and support the governor in her effort. And I'd like to introduce David Maurer to step up and give his two cents worth. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dave Maurer, CEO of Prescott Chamber of Commerce. Less than a week ago, our chamber joined other chambers around the state to sign a business coalition letter, as we often do. This one addressed to Governor Brewer, commending her for the position she has taken in support of expanding the Medicaid access program. Uh, this is critically important to rural hospitals, as you've already heard, uh, such as Yavapai Regional Medical Center. Uh, we are proud of YRMC and all that it means to our community. In recent years, the Prescott Chamber has worked with YRMC to attract leading medical professionals to locate here. The strong financial position of the hospital, no doubt, is attractive as part of that recruitment pro process. However, having to deal more and more with uncompensated care issues puts a burden on all rural hospitals. Prescott is very much a small business town. It is difficult for many of our employers to offer health insurance as an employee benefit. Knowing that uncompensated care costs are ultimately borne by others, this hidden health tax is affecting many, many businesses, whether they're aware of it or not. The fact that the governor's plan to expand the Medicaid program will not impact the state's general fund cannot be overlooked. It seems to be a win-win opportunity for all of us. And let me turn it over to Marnie Ewell, CEO of the Prescott Valley Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Dave. I'm Marnie Ewell, CEO of the Prescott Valley Chamber of Commerce. And this just makes sense for our businesses because they bear the cost of the care for our uninsured by having to pay higher premiums. It, it, it's... It's an education process because I know I hear the other side of things, and Governor, I, I do understand and support you in this, because it directly impacts our rural hospitals and the role they play in our Quad City community. They work hand in hand with our economic development. I have to personally say that two weeks ago tomorrow, my dad had open heart surgery here at the James Family Heart Center, and he's doing mar remarkably. If this hospital weren't here, I would be traveling to Phoenix, would have had to leave my job, spend money, stay with somebody else, while caring for him. And so 
I am passionate about needing a rural hospital, needing it in our community, and continuing the medical care we have. And if this is the way to do it, then this is the way it's got to be. So, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Larry Green. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at West Java Pi Guidance Clinic. We are the largest not-for-profit mental health substance use service provider in Yamapai County. We are in this community nearly 50 years. We serve 7,000 people annually, 1,200 of those are children. I agree with all the previous comments here and also applaud Governor Brewer, her courage and compassion for those with mental illness and substance use disorders. Over the past couple of years since uh, some budget cuts and also with a continuing increase in uninsured, we have struggled uh, to serve everybody in our community, but together as a community we figured it out. Uh, last year as an agency alone we provided $424,000 in charity care alone. It's an un unsustainable track. Uh, current situation is very challenging for everybody in this community. These are the most vulnerable people that we're seeing. Today, our psychiatric hospital is completely full, as it is most days. 13.5% of the people in that hospital have no ability to pay whatsoever. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, one in four people, and I would venture to say uh, of you in this room, one in four people, uh, you're going to be touched by mental illness one way, shape, or form this year. One in 17 uh, people annually experience a serious mental illness. And one in 10 youth live with a mental illness uh, on a regular basis. Governor Brewer, you have given hope to the most vulnerable citizens across Arizona, those struggling with mental illness and substance use disorders. Thank you. I'll turn it over now to Judy Baum from Mountain Valley Rehab. a little with Mountain Valley Regional Rehabilitation Hospital. Judy Baum was called away to a home office meeting. She is our CEO. Uh, I'm the Director of Admissions at Mountain Valley uh, Regional Rehabilitation Hospital, and I would like to thank the Governor and her staff for the opportunity to speak. Uh, just a brief about Mountain Valley. We are an acute care rehabilitation hospital. We're about 10 miles east of here in Prescott Valley. We specialize in the rehabilitation and recovery of patients who have been in accidents. Uh, perhaps they've been in a car accident, self suffered multiple trauma. Um, maybe they've had a, uh, a new brain injury, a, a spinal cord injury. Maybe they're a, a, a new paraplegic. You might find any of these types of patients in our facility on a day-to-day -day basis. We also work with folks that have had an amputation or a stroke, maybe a brain bleed, um, hip fractures, and other neuro diseases like Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis. Uh, Mountain Valley, we've been open since 2006, and we're a 40-bed uh, acute hospital. Um, our hospital days are the same types of days as far as access is concerned and Medicare as used in uh, Tim's hospital here. And we're staffed at Mountain Valley with physical therapists, speech therapists, occupational therapists. Um, our nurses are certified rehab nurses, and our physicians at Mountain Valley specialize in physical medicine and rehabilitation. In October of uh, 2011, we got the news about the access cuts. We've been hearing about them. And just as it affected us, um, from uh, 2011 through 2012, we had a 62% drop in Medicaid admissions to our facility. And that's fairly substantial for our little hospital here in Northern Arizona. Uh, we are the only acute rehab hospital here in Central and Northern Arizona. Um, to try and combat that and help, some of the population here and also to help benefit our uh, referring hospitals including Yavapai Regional and Verde Valley Medical Center and Flagstaff Medical Center. Since we're a rehab hospital, re a regional hospital, we get uh, referrals from all over Central and Northern Arizona. But we stepped up our charity care and last year we spent, well, we spent um, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars on charity care in order to help our community uh, not only support our patients, but also support our referring hospitals here. The other thing that affected us was um, on part of the access cuts was the limit of hospital days, uh, 25 days per year. And that's been a, been a big impact for patients that we don't even see anymore because they spent those 25 days, if you will, in the acute care hospital. 
Maybe they were on a ventilator and they had to be in an LTAC for a few days. By the time they're ready for acute rehab and to get back to their lives and recover, they're out of days, hospital days. So at that point, those patients are faced with going to a nursing home. So again, there's a lot of struggles that we've seen with folks um, throughout the year with these cuts. And we very much support what Governor Brewer is trying to do. And we're really excited about the future for our access patients, but also all the folks in Arizona. So thank you. Good afternoon, Tim. Thank you for inviting me, and Governor. Thank you for allowing me to speak as well. Um, I'm new in my role. I'm the interim president and CEO of Verde Valley Medical Center. We are a 99-bed hospital in the city of Cottonwood, but we serve Sedona, Cottonwood, Camp Verde, Cornville, uh, Clarkdale, and Rimrock. So, and then our sister hospital is up in Flagstaff, and we make up Northern Arizona Healthcare. We serve, in addition, along with Tim in this hospital, we serve all of Northern Arizona. Um, we are wanting very much as, a, as Northern Arizona Healthcare, and I'm sorry that Flagstaff Medical Center's president uh, couldn't be here today, but we applaud the leadership and courage that Governor Brewer has shown through her proposal to restore and expand access coverage to 133% of the federal poverty level. From the perspective of patients in our community, her bold action will be a lifeline for thousands of Arizona residents. And from an economic perspective, as we've heard today, it will bring billions of federal dollars into our state's economy. As a native Arizonan, I see um, health care and health care needs across this state and care deeply about it. And I will tell you, from a patient's perspective, this will have great meaning in their lives. I had an opportunity to ask our medical staff, some of our physician leadership, um, as well as some of our nursing staff as I was rounding earlier this morning um, about what they would like me to say today and relay in my comments. And there was such renewed um, energy and enthusiasm for what we're hearing today in the, in the governor's plan. Um, they see the pain and suffering that only the rest of us can only imagine. And there but for the grace of God go any one of us. And so thank you, Governor, for your compassion and your courage and understanding in this political climate and what we've just been through with Obamacare and, and the election. These are difficult decisions, very difficult decisions, and I can only imagine um, the struggle you had in making it. But we are supporting you. Um, we are committed to playing our part in the governor's plan uh, through the assessment on providers. We think it's smart for Arizona business, and we think it's the right thing for the patients we serve every day. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your uh, comments. Um, I would uh, open it up to uh, questions uh, at this time, if there are any. What I might like to do is maybe do a little recap. I think it's interesting that um, people need to understand, certainly, that um, the Proposition uh, 204 population uh, was voted on for coverage twice by the citizens of Arizona. That's a population that we're restoring by moving forward with this portion of Medicaid. Um, the bottom line is, is that it will bring $2 billion uh, into the economy in the state of Arizona. Uh, 2,000 jobs uh, will be saved uh, in Arizona. And in addition to that, I think that people are concerned um, that maybe the federal government <coughs> will change their mind. And I have made it very, very clear by putting a circuit breaker uh, into the legislation that if the Congress in the future years or a new president in the future years decide that they want to change the amount of money that they're sending back to the state in regards to this, then it's over. The deal is done. We can go back and renegotiate or determine which way Arizona wants to go. Um, that's a very, very important part of where we're headed in regards to this. Then, I think it's important to remind everybody that if we, the state of Arizona, do not accept uh, the $2 billion, um, it will go to maybe California, Colorado, New Mexico, New York, um, Nevada. It doesn't go back to the federal government. It doesn't help the federal deficit. That money is just going to be used by somebody else. So, like 
your mother probably told you, and my mother told me, why cut off your nose um, to spite your face? The voters have voted on it. Two billion dollars coming into our economy, doing what the voters wanted and intended twice. It's not going to affect our general fund, and it's the right thing at this time to do. I'm a fiscal hawk, just like many of you uh, in this room, and I watch those dollars very, very carefully. But I can assure you that I am committed, and I think that anyone that looks at the plan, does the math, that they will join along with us. Bottom line today, I've got health care providers up here uh, from all different sectors of uh, health care, hospitals, clinics, uh, people that deliver those services who have been absorbing all this uncompensated care, uh, not being reimbursed for it. And um, someone's paying for that, and it's being paid for by a hidden tax by you and I. Bottom line, every family in Arizona pays approximately $2,000 a year to pay for uncompensated care. So uh, we're paying for it. The hospitals are eating it. We're paying, and it's now time uh, to do uh, what's right. So I hope that uh, we all come together collectively, do the math, and get this done in the state of Arizona. We have the gold standard when it comes to Medicaid. And Medicaid is only a portion of the Affordable Care Act. People want to believe that it's Medicaid is the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act is an umbrella, and Medicaid is a small portion of it. And it's a win-win at this time for all these providers so that they can deliver their services, be compensated for those services, and um, do what uh, the voters have wanted twice when they voted on it. So with that, um, I, we will, if there's no questions, if you have any questions later, if you need to contact us, please don't hesitate to contact my office or any of these people standing up here. They, they, and they have done the math. They get it. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you. All right, Governor, I just want to talk to you about your uh, visit today and tell us why you're here. Well, it was a beautiful day in uh, Prescott today, and I came up here to deliver my State of the State uh, to the Chamber's audience, met with the Republican women who were meeting at the facility, and then uh, to participate in the press conference for the uh, restoration of uh, Medicaid in Arizona. And what are your thoughts on the local support for this effort here? Well, it seems to me that once people get the information, they understand the facts, they do the math, and they're uh, agreeable. Um, what, what are you going to have to do to get support around the state for this? What's some of the efforts that you're going to do on that? I think it's really, really important, and that's why I'm out traveling the state, uh, north to south, east to west, to give people the facts, uh, give them the information that they need so that they, too, will come to the same decision that I came to. It's difficult because if everybody, if they don't have the right kind of information, it doesn't work out for them. But once they get the facts and they understand, um, I think they'll get on board. I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Frank, do you have one? Yeah. From the time that Prop 204 passes to now, can you talk a little about the process of figuring out how, we're gonna, how you implement this bill down at the Capitol from here? About implementation? About, about, yeah, a little bit about well, where and, this happens. And, and, you know, once, we, once you figure out the plan. When we put a hold on the population, the, yeah. the Proposition 204, and we put the hold on it, we didn't go in and we did not just automatically cut people off mm -hmm. um, Medicaid. What we did is we did it by attrition, so it was a softer blow, meaning that people couldn't sign up, so eventually those roles reduced and reduced and reduced. So now we've got 257,000 people, I believe, that are fit into that category that will be restored back into the plan, which the voters voted for twice, to give them the care. So once we get this through the legislature and everybody is agreeable, then we will start implementing and people will therefore then sign up, get their ability to get the kind of care that they need, assuring that they get the care. But more than that, that our rural hospitals don't go underwater and don't close down, and that it doesn't take any money from the uh, state general fund, therefore giving us money to be able to use 
in areas of education, public safety, um, those issues that people are so very much interested in. And uh, it's just a win-win. It's just absolutely. But once it gets passed, they will apply.